Hello all you beautiful people, how are you doing today? This is Lava Tim Tristan, welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, welcome, hi! So today we're going to be doing another tutorial on immersive engineering. And this one is all about the excavator. This is the last big machine that we haven't done so far other than the uh, Tesla coil. Um, but this one is pretty awesome and well, what it does is it mines up ores for you. Look at that, even the animation of it is so freaking awesome. Look at that. It just pulls everything up. You can kind of tell by what's coming up a little bit, like when it has the speck, that's copper. That's obviously iron. Uh, the ones that don't show, that's because it's probably the other ore. Uh, but when it drops in, you can see, like for this one, different chunks will give you different things and we'll go over how to tell all that. Uh, but for this one, I'm getting copper, iron, and sulfur. The grass is only because when you put it down, it takes out any blocks that are in the way. So that's why the grass is there. But like I set it up with um, a couple different storage crates um, and the dropping conveyor belts. So once this one fills up, it'll go to this one and then this one. And that's just in case I have to be gone for quite a while that is um how i would do it you could also of course do chest but um i like the crates you know and it sticks with the whole immersive engineering vibe going on here this does require a lot of power when i say a lot i do mean a lot the final dimensions of it is eight by three by seven it needs four thousand ninety six rf per tick yeah that's a lot all right, so first of all, before we get into building the actual machine here, um, it is actually two pieces, but I'm gonna show you how to build it together because this is the excavator part and this is the wheel. But I think it's too confusing to try to do it separately. So I recommend doing it all together, but you can actually build the wheel and the excavator separately from each other. All right, so first of all, in order to see what um is available in an area which is in a chunk and to find out what chunk you're in you press f3 and g on the keyboard all at the same time these yellow lines here shows you what chunk you're in so if whatever chunk i'm wanting to test out that's where you want to make sure your core drill sample drill is because when you run it uh, it will tell you what's available in this chunk now I'm going to tell you, this takes a lot of materials to make. However, you get so many resources back from it that it is not even possible to mine out in one chunk. So let's see. So first of all, to make the core sample drill, we're going to need four steel scaffolding, three steel fence, and two light engineering blocks. Now, when you click on one, and this one I've already done, so if I click on it now, it won't do anything. And you can set your power next to it. I have the creative one, but for instance, you can use any of the capacitors or whatever directly next to it, or you can connect it to any of these down here. Uh, let's do that and clear. There we go. All right, so, um, but I do have this set up so that way we could uh, test something out. So this one I've already done. And, but I'll show you what it looks like when one does it. So this is the core sample that I got for this area. So it's uh, the calcoprite, 77.88%. But the important thing is the yield. Well, I mean, what kind it is is important too, and I'll show you why. But the yield is what's important because that tells you how many ores you're actually going to get out of this one area. And there is a huge difference. Now, here's where you're going to want your engineer's manual again, because if you go to it, and if you go to the excavator, on here it says mineral deposits. So if you click on that, it'll talk about all the different deposits plus, you know, the machine and stuff now you can do this but I mean honestly I think it's easier to just do your core drill so if you put the core sample drill it'll tell you it'll give you this little sample thing but here is where you want to click the individual saturation uh, there we go 
Um, so here is where you'll be able to tell whatever it tells you. So for ours, we got this one, calcoprite. So it'll tell us we'll get iron, copper, and sulfur. And it usually consists of 35 of iron or 35% of iron, 35% of copper, and 30%. So pretty, pretty even with all three of these. So you're going to base it off of the different things here. There's all different kinds. And again, I always recommend having the manual. So if you're looking for a certain thing, this is going to tell you if you're going to get what you're actually looking for, including igneous rocks, where you just get the rocks. Um, uh, if you do it in the nether, of course, you can get nether quartz and sulfur. I don't think it would personally be worth it to set it up in the nether, but if you are in game and you have plenty of resources, go for it. I mean, you can use it for whatever you want. This is just the different things that you can use it for. All right, so uh, we saw how to make that. Now, I did set up a couple different core sample drills. It does not matter where in the chunk that you sample, as long as you stay within the chunk and make sure your machine, your excavator that you set up, is still within the chunk that you want. So, for instance, this one gave us 100% of the calprite. So it's still same one. Now this one gave us a hundred percent and again different chunk. I did one over here. Now this one gave us no minerals at all which is why you want to make sure and use this. Now the cool thing is you can pick your core sample drill up with a simple pickaxe and put it back down and sample at different places. You do not have to make one for each chunk. I was just doing this for demonstration purposes. But I also set one up, or, or not. All right, well, let's set one up real quick so I can just show you how it works. Okay, so see, we're in a different chunk here. So if I set this down, uh, if you set your power next to it, or again, you connect, it there um all you have to do is right click on it and yes i know i'm in creative but it works the exact same way in survival so once you right click on it we're going to wait for that spinning animation to be completely done we're going to click on it again and that's going to give us our core sample so if we go in our to our inventory and look at it this one again is a hundred percent calporite now again, it's probably because the area we're in, but if we went to different areas, different biomes, it'll give us different results. And even from the one we have set up to these, these are 100%. So that one's actually a bit better than what we have. All right, so let's see on, let's get rid of this, F3 and G. All right, so here is what we're gonna need to do. When you find a good area, again, the final dimension is going to be eight by three by seven. So this is going to be your middle block. First of all, we need 26 steel scaffolding, 16 steel sheet metal, nine steel blocks, nine light engineering blocks, four heavy engineering blocks, three radiator blocks, and one redstone engineering block. All right, so to set it down, you're going to do your block of steel again. Um, if you've seen the other tutorials on immersive engineering, I set it up in layers because I feel that is the best way to show you how to do this. Okay, so on top of that steel block, you're going to put one and then one on each side of the steel scaffolding. And then on either side of that, a block of steel. Then on top of that, see we have our three steel there, so you're going to do steel scaffolding one two three four five and that is the easiest way i have found to do this so if you do your five out this one sticks out from the rest of it so it should be one out from that steel block so then on either side you're going to do three and three of the steel scaffolding and then you're going to do two steel sheet metal a radiator block two steel sheet metal from that a light engineering block and another steel sheet metal all right, then on top of that, see this is even here. So again, I start with the part that I know. So steel scaffolding, two, and then a steel block, two steel scaffolding, a steel block, and a heavy engineering block. And then on the very end over here, you're gonna have a block of steel. 
So then on the very back, we're going to put three engineering blocks, two steel sheet metal, a redstone engineering block, and then in the front here, another steel sheet metal, light engineering block, steel sheet metal, and three heavy engineering blocks. Okay, and then directly on top of that, so if we go over one, so directly on top, we'll have a line like this of the steel scaffolding. So you're going to do one, two, three, four, five again. Then the way I do it is choose either front or back, but then check out the pattern. So it's going to be either three light engineering on the back with two radiator blocks. And then you're going to come out three for the steel sheet metal here, a light engineering block and four of the steel sheet metal. Now this last one, I left it as one because, well, the top one's only one, so this one's pretty easy. So one over from where your steel scaffolding is, you're going to go one over and then block of steel, three steel scaffolding, and a block of steel. And then in the very middle of that, on top, you're going to do a block of steel. And again, that's where the wheel part comes in, so it mimics this pattern here. That and this for the very top. So this middle part right here is essentially the wheel and you can build it separately. Um, some people build it and then put the uh, excavator around it. Honestly, I think that way is confusing, but there are people that do it that way and show it that way. So now to form the machine, where you're going to want to hit it is actually right here. This heavy engineering block on the side right here. So if we smack that, it forms it, and it looks all beautiful. Of course, as always, wherever the red dot is, you can put a lever there, turn the machine off and on, or you just make sure that it's fully powered. And that is what the machine looks like. It's beautiful. All right, so that is the excavator. Um, that is the awesome way to automatically get some ores. Again, uh, just make sure whatever ore it is that uh, you find an area that aligns with what you want. Might take a while. Might take a while. But again, the fabulous thing is you can pick up the core sample drill and just take it with you. So um, I realize you can't have the creative, but you can take these capacitors. So, all right, that's it for today. If you have any questions or comments about this or any of the things we've covered so far, don't hesitate to leave them down below. I try to answer every single one. And if I don't know the answer, I will try to find it for you. I'm not always successful, but I at least try. All right, well, that's it for today. Till next time, this is Lava Temptress. Don't get burned.